Welcome back to Interactive Imaging with Dr. Dale Miles. I'm Scott Drake. Uh, Dr. Miles, talk about the other kinds of pathology that's actually more than dental pathology that dentists now see with cone beam CT. Uh, okay, Scott, um, I think we, we discussed some of this uh, in one of the previous videos, but I, I, I kind of call them the not so incidental findings. Um, many of my colleagues, when they see calcifications, let's say, in the paracellar region, that's up in the middle of your head near the sphenoid sinus. They call those incidental findings, but if something's bilateral, if something is, is uh, in several areas of the body, if those calcifications were also in the neck, then it's more likely to be a significant systemic finding. Uh, in this case, it would be what we call medial arterial calcifications, and they're seen in diabetics, sometimes undiagnosed or maybe uncontrolled diabetics. And when those calcifications occur, they actually can signify that the patient has uh, renal disease. You know that diabetics have uh, kidney failure uh, laid into the uncontrolled stages of their disease. So we're actually picking up uh, these findings in both the neck and the paracellar region on many, many cases. Uh, we've got uh, two articles actually that will go in press probably in the next year to, to actually report these findings. There are other findings in the paranasal sinus regions. Um, I have uh, a standard line in, in the software that we have called EasyWriter, which is a report generating software that is the patient must be referred to uh, their primary care provider and or an otolaryngologist for clinical and endoscopic evaluation. And the reason we put that in is that there's just such a good uh, uh, set of images of the paranasal sinuses the maxillary sinuses, the ethmoid air cells, uh, sphenoid sinus and frontal sinuses. And when things like the sphenoid sinus are involved, um, there are other important structures uh, adjacent to that sinus space that could disseminate the disease through the rest of the body. So those are just two examples. I could probably uh, go on, but um, there's, there's good information out there. Some on my website that, that people can go to to download um, to articles that will actually outline those important systemic findings. So do you think it would be a good idea for dentists to use cone beam to brush up on their biology? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, it just go back to diabetes. Diabetes in the dental office, I, uh, there isn't a week go by that the dentist doesn't see a patient that is, you know, requiring that their insulin levels be appropriate for the procedure, you know, not too low, not too high. Um, sometimes they even have to reschedule a patient. but. Now they have tools that if the patient has some signs or symptoms or history um, that their diabetes is not under control, maybe they can uh, order a cone beam scan and look for some of these other changes that we talked about earlier. All right, Dr. Miles, thank you so much. Thank you, Scott. This has been Interactive Imaging with Dr. Dale Miles. I'm Scott Drake. Thanks for watching.